Module 4, Lesson 1, we're going to be measuring and comparing pencil lengths to the nearest half inch, quarter inch, and eighth of an inch, as well as we're going to analyze the data through a line plot. So I already have my line plot written out here, and I'm going to talk about how I came up with uh, all of those data points on the uh, line plot when I deal with Part 2 here. Let's go ahead and look at part one. So it says draw a line plot for the following data measured in inches. So it's key that you know that these this measurement unit is in inches. So if you notice, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven data points. So in fourth grade, most students learned about a line plot, and we know that we're going to put an X over top of each of these measurement units to represent the piece of data. First thing I had to do in determining what uh, I was going to use, and this talks about part B here, I needed to determine what I was going to use as my endpoints. So I came up with one and four for my endpoints on my line. The reason why I chose one and four because my smallest piece of data that I have in inches would be my one and a half. The reason why I chose one is because I have one and a half inches for my smallest piece of data. I know that it's not going to be less than my one here. And on the opposite end of my line plot, I chose four because I knew the largest piece of data I had was my three and three fourths, which is going to fall just shy of that four inch mark. I just had to make sure that all of my data would fit between one and four, or my two endpoints. So now to talk about why I chose fourths. If you look at all of my numbers here, the ones that are fractions, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine out of my 11 pieces of data are mixed numbers. My fractions are either going to be units of halves or units of fourths. So I know if I listed my multiples of two are two, four, and I can stop there because the first multiple of four is four. I know that anything that is a half, I can change to fourths by multiplying it by two. So for example, you see one and one half is not on my line plot here. So I know that one and one half is equal to one and I need to multiply what? Do I need to multiply two by to get to four? You should have said two. And I'm going to do the same thing to my numerator and multiply my 1 by 2 as well. So all I did was I took my 1 half and I said, well, I know I need to get it into fourths because that's my common denominator, my lowest common denominator. So 2 times 2 equals 4. Therefore, I'm going to have to say, well, I have to multiply my 1 and my numerator by 2 to get 2. So I know that 1 and 1 half is equal to 1 and 2 fourths. So we said that this is equal to 1 and 2 fourths, so I'm going to put an x over top of that. Next, we have 2 and 3 fourths. Well, 2 and 3 fourths is already in our units, which is fourths, so we can put that in. We know that 3 is also on our line plot already, so we can put that in. Let's cross those out as we move along. 2 and 3 fourths, once again, is there. We can put that in. 2 and 1 half. Well, I don't know 2 and 1 half is equal to, but I know it's going to be between 2 and 3. So let's take this half and turn it into fourths. To go from 2 to 4, I have to multiply by what? And it's 2. If we were to look here, you know that this is times 1 and this is times 2. This is where this times 2 is coming from. 2 times 2 equals 4. That's how we're getting to this 4 here. So I know I have to say 1 times 2 is 2. So 2 and 1 half is equal to 2 and 2 fourths. I'm going to put an x over top of that. Now I have 2 and 3 fourths. Well, 3 fourths would be in our unit of fourths, so we're good there. 3 and 3 fourths. Once again, that can easily be plotted. Now I have 3 again. Let's get that. Cross out our 3. 3 and a half. Well, once again, I need to change my half into fourths. I know three and a half is going to be between three and four, but I don't have a three and a half mark here, so I have to convert. Some students are trying to force this in somewhere in here, which is incorrect. You need to find your equivalent form of one half and match it up with that whole three. Let's go ahead and do that. Well, we know that two times two equals four. You have to say well, one times two equals two. The reason why we have to multiply this two 
and a 2 here is because 2 over 2 is equal to 1. And remember, anything times 1 equals itself. So really, this is the form of 1. 2 over 2 is equivalent to 1. It's equal to 1. So we're multiplying 1 half times fraction form of 1, which is giving us the same number, just in a different or equivalent form. All right, so that we know that this is 3 and 2 fourths. So we plot that point, cross that out. Let's do a quick count. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 pieces of data. We have two more left for our 10 and 11. That is correct. Go ahead and get this. Uh, we just did a problem that was similar to this where we said 2 and 1 half is equal to 2 and 2 fourths. So we know we don't have to do that work again. And we also did something similar. This last problem, 3 and 1 half was equal to 3 and 2 fourths. So we are finished with our top part. Once again, with the bottom part, it says explain how you decided to divide your holes into fractional parts and how you decided where your number scale should begin and end. So the reason why I divided my holes into fractional parts of fourths is because my lowest common denominator is going to be fourths. I know that I have to have fourths. Now, if, it, if I had one of these numbers that was eighths, I would have had to go all the way out to eighths which would give us an even more accurate measuring when we were measuring our pencils in this case. So hopefully this helped. If you have any questions about this, please ask in class or in the comments below. Watch another video. We should have several videos in module four up now, as well as module three, two, and one, which we still need to make sure that we stay sharp with that information. So go back and maybe take a look at one of these playlists here. Got a couple playlists up on the screen right now that you can check out. And I will see you all in class. Come ready to ask questions and answer questions.